A long time ago, sailors were common on the high seas. They were a common sight on the shores of Draconia, Noir, and the islands between. They'd sail across the seas carrying goods to trade between lands. One crew worked on a huge ship called La Vuela Gigante, which was the biggest, most powerful ship of its time. This crew would sail between Draconia and Noir almost non-stop, only pausing to drop off and collect supplies. There were nearly 200 sailors working in this ship, who were all more experienced than any other. They were the best sailors in the world, with more knowledge about the sea and what's in it than any other. One stormy night, when they were farther from land than anywhere else in the known world, there was a catastrophe. Their giant ship was split apart, and only one survivor was able to escape on a lifeboat and survive the month-long journey back to land. What happened, you may ask? After a hearty meal, the boy described a horrible sea monster ripping the giant ship apart. Its skin was a pale blue, but its eyes were a brighter teal than any gemstone he'd seen in his years working as a custodian on the ship. Its incomprehensibly huge body shredded the ship with ease. The boy grew up to be the father of marine biology on origin. His name? Bert Triangle. Today, November 25, 2079, marks exactly 400 years since she passed at the ripe old age of 59. Well hi, Omni Sunday. Let's talk about the animal he witnessed that ripped apart that ship so long ago. One of the first organisms Triangle named was Telus Minor, a small squid-like thing that turned out to not quite be an animal at all. He described it as an adept swimmer that tasted like salted greens. He believed it to be the key behind finding the sea monster that killed his old crew but died without seeing it again. Here's the final art. These swimming critters are commonly referred to as tealers, thanks to their brightly colored eye. They are very common food in the islands, and can also be found as an export around the continental shores. Adults are usually about half a meter long, but the largest confirmed tealer was three times bigger. And there are claims of larger specimens every once in a while that are usually disproven or dismissed. They've always been reported as a healthy food, but contaminants in the oceans nowadays have proven to make them somewhat toxic. People still eat them of course, but scientists recommend not to eat more than one serving a week. Of course, the bigger you are, the safer it is to eat them without getting mercury poisoning. They eat plankton, but the dark spots on their body generate extra energy with photosynthesis. Let's talk about what exactly they are if they're not animals. 200 million years ago, there were two plants that evolved side by side. If you want a deeper look into them, you can watch my sapient plants video, but the quick rundown is that the one on the left evolved a heterotrophic lineage, meaning it ate other food to survive, while the one on the right evolved an autotrophic lineage, meaning it made its own food through photosynthesis like other plants. The thing is that they both evolved in favor of movement, and even the heterotrophs still did a bit of photosynthesis. An early divergence in the heterotrophic lineage was that one stayed on land while the other moved into the waters. The aquatic heterotrophic plants quickly developed a hydrodynamic body for swimming similar to the early jawless fish. They lived close to the surface to absorb sunlight and also ate plankton. Tailors today aren't much different, though they do grow much bigger. Tailors, however, aren't their only descendants. Aquatic heterotrophic plants are a relatively diverse class of organisms, with orders from herbivores to carnivores and basic to complicated. In the order Telera, there are only three recognized extant species. One is the Teler we know, while the other is the Teler that sank Triangle ship, and the last is a more recently discovered species. The Rock Teler is a multi-legged organism with a sturdy body. It can change its color at will to camouflage with gravel or sand, but it can choose to be colorful to attract mates. The parts that don't change color are what we in the business like to call its solar panels, otherwise known as the photosynthesizers. They use their legs to grasp at prey and eat them. They are somewhat similar to an octopus and they're quite intelligent. They live a bit deeper in the ocean and don't depend on photosynthesis so much. The greater tealer that sank the colossal ship was more closely related to the rock tealer than the lesser tealers discovered by Triangle. Discovered in 2000, the Greater Tealer was found deep beneath the waves. 
On an expedition to find the old sunken ship with their new pressure-resistant technology, scientists didn't find the wreck, but they discovered the old monster that was responsible for it. Called Telus Major, it struck fear into the hearts of researchers, despite them being in no real danger. The equipment that was there with it was able to make it back to shore after analyzing the giant sea serpent, and this is how we know it's real. Here's the final art. Although it looks a bit different from the way Bert Triangle first described it, it was easily recognized as the sea serpent he spoke of, a multi-limbed animal with a long neck and sharp beak. It had dark tail spots across its body that matched its beak. It has suction cups on its limbs and large fins that allow it to move deceptively fast. It's been spotted other times on a few other deep sea expeditions, though it's always the one specimen. It's unknown how old this specimen is, if there are any others, or if it's the same one that sank Triangle's ship. Maybe if we can one day find the wreck, we'll get more information on this mysterious animal. But that's about it for this video. Check out my Patreon where you can join Captain Co-op and having your name shown at the end of my videos for just a dollar. My next Becky video will be about marine reptiles. Hope to see you there, and thanks for watching!